Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Over the past 30 years, has racket technology actually changed? Stay tuned. All right, guys, so before I get started, I know this is a new view for you guys, but um, it's all part of the video, okay? Um, good morning to everybody out there. Um, good morning to me. Thank you for the, the piping hot dark roast. My coffee sponsor of today is Jason Chima. Jason writes, enjoy your coffee. I enjoy your YouTube. Oh, well, thank you. And I will. I appreciate that, man. Mm. Woo. Nice. Just, I needed that today, guys. I needed that today. Um, all right. So if you want to support my piping hot dark roast coffee habit, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. Thank you all in advance and thank you all for keeping it going all right so why am i behind the counter today versus in front of it like i usually am well over the past 30 years rackets have kind of evolved but has the material evolved think about that think about that nobody ever asks like what a what a racket is made of when everybody says carbon you're right it is carbon everybody says graphite you are right carbon is graphite has that changed i know in you know the many years people add names to it titanium right basalt encode technology Right, but what is all that? Those are all marketing and buzz phrases. So they use those words to basically grab you, right? Make you like think, like, oh, is there really titanium in there? Yeah, there's titanium dust like fairy dust in there. Cause there as long as there's like a little bit of titanium in there, they can use the word titanium. They can use the word tungsten right but how much of it really is in there and how much of it really makes a difference right zero nothing right so it, it's uh it's something that they have to use just to to keep brackets flowing if you know what i mean all right so but since graphite hasn't really changed i mean i guess braiding has changed a little bit you went from two dimensional braid you know and i'm talking about braiding like your hair you know like braiding like this right the racket uh material the racket the graphite they braid the graphite right they went from two dimensional three dimensional to four dimensional so some of the rackets out there um dunlop actually promoted it a couple years ago they said, we have 4D braiding, four-dimensional braiding. What does braiding do to a racket? Well, it makes it firmer, yet, yet flexible. So as you braid something and as you add, you know, put impact on it, it actually bends just like that, right? But it firms up when you need it to firm up. And depending upon how thick you make the racket will depend on how stiff it is so let's take a look at so this is my done pile of rackets this is when people bring in their rackets and have us restring them so let's take a look at some of the older frames that have been brought in for stringing and then we can kind of talk about the evolution of rackets so as you can see hammer 70 see the thickness of that thing right Oversize 110. Remember that? And then the PWS, as you can see here. So they put the PWS means perimeter weighting system. 
So they put the weights here to give it weight at the top of the head. So basically to stabilize the sweet spot right there. And hammer technology, meaning the whole thing is light overall, but heavy in the head. So what did that do? Basically make it easy for you to play. You throw, you basically set your path. You throw the racket at the ball. Racket kind of takes over with the weight. Sound easy enough? Well, it made a lot of mediocre players pretty good, especially beginners. So that's why the technology took off. Now, let's look at also, I saw this thing says stretch. See stretch? There was a time period about 20, a little over 20 years ago. Everything was a stretch. Everything was longer. Half an inch to an inch, pretty popular. I mean, it, it's kind of got out of hand up to like five inches with a, the original Bubba. But um, yeah, that was getting way too crazy. Can you imagine a 32 inch long racket? Crazy, right? So that was supposedly technology back then too. Making a racket longer gives you supposedly more reach, more power, right? So you had longer and bigger, lighter, head heavier with this racket. That was technology, but still graphite, right? Looking at this. Graphite Light XP Oversize. So this was about the same time frame as this. Um, maybe a little older, actually. No, it was definitely a little older because I can see from the, the writings. So this is about 25 years ago. Oversize was the thing. Everybody played with an oversize, even high-level players. And... I don't know if you guys remember, but Thundersticks, um, CTS Approach, all those rackets in the oversize were actually pretty popular even amongst the pros. So technology then, oversized. But then you prob they probably had to string it super tight to keep it in the court. They did make a smaller version of these too. So the 90s, 90 square inches of those lightnings, those thunder sticks for the people who didn't need it to be bigger. But the trend was the oversized outsold the uh, the 90s. So the 110s outsold the 90s because us people who play at the park, we just want more power, you know? So this was technology. This was technology back then. On the other end of the spectrum here, as we move forward, um, the popularity kind of went to the smaller frames, like these, the 95s, you know, 6195s, you know, the classics was a timeless racket. They went to K-Factor, um, and then, is this an ENCODE? No, BLX, ENCODE BLX, after these or before these, um, they went smaller, 95, heavier. These are teams, but I'm just showing you. Um, these are the 10-ounce versions. So 11.7 was now the industry standard in the player sticks. So it went from popularity. So this is the weird thing. This is the weird thing. I saw great players using rackets like this, and then they switched to rackets like this. Straight power and oversized to control and smaller. So, and that was kind of within a, I want to say 10 to 20 year range. Like people use big and then they went to small. So I'm glad, play, I'm glad players can adapt pretty easily. Now, in the last, I want to say 10, 20 years, the evolution, the evolution has been a hundred square inches. So let's take a look. We got bananas, right? We got bananas. I'll grab that. So we got bananas and pure drives kind of dominating the market. Now, what happened? What happened to, uh, to uh, racket technology? Well, we went from oversized 
to mid, mid plus to 100. So 100 has kind of become the industry standard in most, most of the population's rackets. So we've kind of settled on a middle ground. But again, it's still graphite. It's still graphite. So we went from head heavy, oversized, to heavy, heavy in the regular, right? Slightly head lighter, head lighter for sure. Now we are in the middle. 100, moderately head light for faster swing. And the weight is kind of in between now. So like I was telling you, 11.7 unstrung for a 6195. These kind of clocked in at about 10 ounces. Now we are at 10.6, 300 grams right in between on the regular versions of these. So here's where technology has changed a bit, a bit. Although the material hasn't changed, they've added this throat to make it more aerodynamic. So it cuts through the air faster, it's easier to come over the ball. It makes it faster to come over the ball. So shape of beam have changed on this particular one. This is pretty standard. It's kind of a round beam, right? Pretty head light, yet head heavy enough for most people to plow through. But Again, right, where the material hasn't changed, just weight distribution, the beam, right, and the way it swings. I feel like they've made it, I mean, this was easy, but head heavy. This was a little harder. You had to swing a little harder yourself. Now your swing is coming through pretty fast, and it's going to give you a medium level of power. Okay, so this is the kind of the evolution of rackets, right? Materials really haven't really changed. It's all about, you know, head size, weight, and uh, swing speed. All right, hope I taught you something. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. You know, most people, they quit tennis because, you know, it's hard to find somebody to play with, right? I'm just, I just feel so lucky to have my buddy, my buddy coach Rob, that we have so much in common. You know, we're, we're both kind of follically impaired. And ain't that right, coach Rob? Us follically challenged friends have to hit together. Yes, so I have coach Rob. If you guys need a friend, and you're follically impaired or our bearded one and looking for your bearded mate, right? Check out Player Court. They have people that look like you, play like you, maybe act like you. Check out their site. It's playercourt.com. tennis buddy can teach you how to twirl. Hopefully You'll get it someday. Hopefully <laughs> better than that. We'll have to keep practicing. <laughs>